Hi there, it's Peter Hibbs King from the Harry Game Lords, and we have been playing this Disrupt from Triple Meeple Games. What did we think? Stay tuned to find out. So, uh, we've unboxed this already and had a good look through it, and tonight we got to play this beast. Uh, it was. In terms of, I, as most people know, I tend to do the learning of the game in advance. Wait, we all learn. Oh, wait, in advance. In terms of reading the rule book. Rule book is good, but it is a tough game to get your heads round until you really start to play it. And to be honest, it was um, a shared effort once we got the game onto the table, just working out how we were going to play it. So the learning game took a lot longer. It was probably two and a, two and a half to three hours to get through a learning game um, where we were trying to work it out as we went through. Um, but that being said... And I was the definitive loser in this game by a, four well, points. By four points from the third person who was way off the second and first. So it was um, there were the, the score spread was large in our first game, and I guess that was because we were all all trying to work out um, the uh, the different ways to play your asymmetric character. This is a truly asymmetric game, so you have um, very different cards that sort of suit the way that you've got to play. Um, and I guess the hard bit for me sat in, I was the um, market leader. So I'd got all the um, pr the products already designed, already established. And my job was to try and stop the other ones from being established and, and, and try and build my brand and keep my brand. Well, that's how I played it. And my cards would help me do that. My cards could be played into the pipeline, which is basically the development of each of the projects that the, uh, the starter up was trying to develop these projects and get them to market. And my cards were about stopping them adding the sort of development cubes on um, or preventing that from happen, happening, taking money away from people or stealing shares off people because I'd got all the money. So I could, you know, I'd got the power. So I could go in, swoop in, um, foreclose companies and get their shares and auction them off, that kind of thing. So lots of take that in my play. Um, so, but... Each different character played very, very differently, had a different hand of cards that did very different things. Um, and at the heart of this game, there's sort of two or three different parts. There's the worker placement element, really, really simple. Um, for those of you that have played Endless Winter, it runs on a similar way to that, where you've got an action, then you move down to the next action and the next action, and then a final action. The difference here is that if, you, if you're the third player, you're only gonna to get to do the top action, the top two actions. So the, you get, it's the law of diminishing returns in this game. So being first on an action tree is really important when you play it because you get to do more actions. Um, there are a couple of really important tracks that um, you can be moving up and down. And then you've got the shares. You can place your shares out and, and, and set them at a value. And if people buy them, you'll get that money. And then there are events at the end of uh, each round that mean that the, the public might go and buy your shares if they are the most popular of the um, brands out there. So there's a lot of interweaving parts. By the end of it, it, as I say, we all kind of worked out. And, you know, I'm not a stock exchange person, but it felt as though we had been playing a bit of the stock exchange, <laughs> which for a worker placement game, rather than a kind of classic um, swing, you know, passing money around the table kind of shit stocks and shares game. I think it did a brilliant job of that kind of um, bringing that to life within the within the um, within the board. Um, so. I really enjoyed this game despite losing. I don't think I played it well. and I, It was a game that I was struggling the whole time I was playing to work out, am I doing this right? Is this the right way to... Um, so it's a game that I think definitely would... You want two, three, four, five games on this. But you can tell straight out the box on the first game, this is really solid. Um, there's a lot of decision space, which did lead to a bit of AP, to be honest, around the table. We all had our moments where we were trying to work out exactly what we did. Um, and there's a fair bit of, you know, it's one of those worker placements where there's a fair bit of player interaction, not only in the cards you're playing, but that whole thing of you've got your move already planned out and then two people steal the spaces, which mean that you can only do half the move you're going to do. So you, you have to decide which bit is the most important. Was it just getting that one resource or was it all the other things I wanted to do? So there's all that balance in there. Absolute peach of a game. Definitely check this out. This was, it was absolutely brilliant. Loved it. Check it out. Slightly Beardy James here. So I was the business process outsourcer or BPO for short. Um, sounds really boring, but actually it was a lot of fun. This game 
Right, it's a tough learn. I think the hardest thing about this game is, like, it is almost as though you are learning how to do the stock market and shares. In fact, I feel like I've learned something. It's an educational game. Um, and I really enjoyed it. In fact, here they are. My little two thumbs. Two thumbs up. Um, this game is really thematic in the way that it works. Pete said that it's asymmetric. Uh, but I think that this game does something very special in the way that all of the roles are needed. And they all do slightly different twisted things. But everyone has to work together to push the game forwards. And um, it's really interesting to see the stories com that come out of that. Um, so I, I don't know, my role was to kind of like, I guess, slightly observe what's going on and to, to give people the resources they need. I amassed resources, um, it was great. I got so much stuff. Uh, I bought stocks and I sold stocks and I pushed myself up the branding track as far as I could. Um, and I had a lot of fun with that. My favorite thing that I did in this game was one of the actions, which only one person can do each round, is to look at what's happening coming up. The event cards, so, so interesting. Because um, there's something interesting and good that happens. So for example, a certain action's gonna activate for everyone, or everyone's gonna do something. And then the public buys the stocks that are out there. So everyone's got stocks, and you can put them out to the public or to each other to buy. Uh, depending on where they are, they are less or more desirable, and also there's this kind of like public love type thing, and everyone's talking about all the projects. But um, being able to see the future, that forecast of the future, is really, really interesting to me because then you can start um, telling Dave that maybe he should put um, that that project uh, a little bit higher up that that share because I was trying to help him and he didn't listen to my advice, probably because of June. Check out our review for June. Um, so, <laughs> the um, I think the lasting thing with this game is it slightly scares me because it is like a, a step into the world of um, shares and trading and all that kind of stuff. It's hostile. It's um, kind of like a lot of second guessing each other. Um, my favourite kind of story that happened was, and Andrew will probably tell you a bit more about it, um, the story of Miniature Prime which was one of Dave's startups, and uh, <laughs> Andrew heavily invested in Miniature Prime, and... Uh, I, I believe that dream. <laughs> and the public were pumped about Miniature Prime. The hype was real. People were feral. Um, and uh, <laughs> got more and more attention. Uh, and the further and further we got through the game, we realised nobody's actually done any work on this project. It is a massive bag of air which is going to be released into the public it actually did all right in the end but uh, i love that kind of that whole thing of um people buying and selling and investing in something that is basically a pile of poo and um, it was just uh, it was just very real um, and uh yeah i i really enjoyed this game and i think that it is something uh, they do the whole thing of stocks and shares and all that kind of stuff really well hi dave the gray Starter upper extraordinaire. <laughs> well, not that extraordinary. Actually, no. <laughs> not that extraordinary. Um, <laughs> deeply adequate starter upper, I think, is what I meant to say. Um, so, disrupt. Um, there is quite a lot of disrupting people's plans, which I think is perfect for us guys. Um, first off, although this is a prototype, it's not really a prototype. It's got some really gorgeous I mean, little thumbs up like meeples. How good are those? Um, you've also got some uh, little bing light bulbs. Got to love that. And some little cog wheels and different meeples for everybody. Some of them look quite sinister. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. The other thing that I really love is uh, these scoring tracks which look like credit cards how cool is that and then little twiddly things that just looks it's really simple but really neat i was the star dropper and my job was to create new projects like this board tube sounds great um miniature prime 
absolutely bombed. Um, <laughs> well, I say it bombed, as James said, it looked fantastic. I there was some, there was some, there was some great artworks. Some, um, well, a lot of chat on uh, the socials. N- absolutely, no work went into it whatsoever. And it absolutely bombed at the end. Um, yeah, I think there were like minimal project work went on. Um, but the public seemed to love it. They bought loads of shares and Ange legged it with their money. It was ace. <laughs> um, in fact, I think the only one that actually got the proper amount of love and development was BoardTube. Um, my mistake, and I realised about halfway through the game, was as as the initial developer, what I should have done is really pushed and kept hold of the the good stuff, and you know got rid of miniature prime early doors while the price was high. What I actually did is I flogged everything, um, <laughs> and I got quite a lot of money at, at the start. But when it came to the end scoring, I'd sold all my shares pretty much in everything. Um, apart from some sort of fake Bitcoin monstrosity that also <laughs> failed dismally. Um, and I tried to push that to the public, but they'd already been bitten, I think, by Miniature Market, and they were not buying. Um, <laughs> however, for this was completely asymmetric, everybody pulling in different ways, um, Me and Pete had loads of stuff to start with. So Pete had all the established big boy shares. I had all the new stuff. Ange and James didn't really have anything, but they had loads of really cool cards to put the money in. And Ange played a blinder um, for once. Yeah, I don't know if he's feeling unwell or something. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it was kind of me as a little guy, but with loads of startup stuff. Um, Pete with all of the already established brands and then these two lending out the money and the resources james had more resources than you could possibly i'm sure he had more resources than the bank at the end of the game it was insane true um but everything really seemed to work which it just felt it did take quite a long time for the game to click i think we were probably on third turn before it's like right actually now we don't need to keep looking at the rule book and working things out were away um so yeah did take quite a while for everything to click but once it did it just it's really tight um and had a bit of an advantage i think because he looked out let's be honest with ourselves and looked out put in the work um (laughs) but i think actually this could this is quite tight resources for me certainly were really scarce obviously because james was just stockpiling them all I was struggling to get my cards out because I was really struggling for a couple of the resources, but that's kind of the point of being the startup investor. So everything was really quite thematic for the different types of people that you're playing. So no, absolutely loved it. Um, Next time, do things very differently, I think, with a bit of experience, but that's what you want from a game is not just going, oh yeah, it's clearly obvious how I play this. Um, being able to learn, go back, play differently, try different things. And the fact that it is so asymmetric means that next time, if I play one of the different um, types, it's going to be a different game. So no, get involved, Kickstarter, disrupt. Very good. Very good indeed. <laughs> and just a bit of lady here. Now, this is, ah, oh, what a great, great game this is. Really, really enjoyed it, um, and yeah, these guys always put out something in that, in even the prototype form that is that not only plays really well, looks amazing, uh, but we Harry Game Lords always have a fantastic uh, experience, and that was certainly what took place tonight. As we have said in other reviews, we love a game that creates an atmosphere on the table and stories that will continue to be relived over and over again and that's what happened tonight at the table all of us in this game has a pack of their own cards and some of those cards are similar Uh, so there are some people that will have cards that 
uh, that have these uh, these coloured uh, parts on it. So mine had had a good had got one with green and one with yellow. Those are to do with the different uh, flow locations that are on the board for bringing through the new uh, projects that Dave's character was trying to push through. Me being the angel investor, I had two cards that at different stages, if I wanted to trigger them, would allow shares in these new uh, things coming to pass to get anybody who had shares would get two million per share on one go and two million again per share on another go. Really nice and a really nice incentive to get behind that project, which as Dave and James has already said, I did. Uh, <laughs> I really got behind Miniature Prime. Um, Dave did an amazing job of selling it to us at the beginning. And I heavily invested uh, from the start in Miniature Prime, which really paid off for me. Uh, because um, I, uh, I bought four shares in this, in this market. Um, That's I, a lot. It's a lot. It was predominantly, it was most of the shares I had. Um, and again, this whole thing of there was no research going into this. Nothing was going into it. But yet I was still generating the interest in the social media as well, still keeping it up high. So that certain cards that I was going to play would benefit me. So there was those cards that got the two million. So I was like, yeah, brilliant. I'm going to get uh I'm going to get four, eight million, brilliant, good times. Then there was, uh, this card was absolutely brilliant. This was the gravy train. Uh, <laughs> the gravy train, such a cool card. The now, peak of the hype. All of the cards are really cool. And what you can see is on the, on the top, uh, the top uh, left um, uh, is what you would get. So this one's quite a small amount. I don't think get one million quid for playing this card. I would have to play down uh, this in the resources, but then what I get from it was amazing. Gravy Train, each player gains 4 million for each share they own for the top social hype project. Guess who had hyped Miniature Prime to the top? Yeah, I had. And who was sitting on four shares? Me. 16 million amazing absolutely epic one time which was a beautiful moment dave had got miniature prime sitting out in the eight million slot he was like and in fact this happened the session before the gravy train happened dave's like oh i've got the air in the eight million so uh you know anyone who wants to buy that and if you want to buy it eight million you can do that <laughs> and then i had this card come up the initial offering by any one share from the market for two million. So I bought it off Dave for two million. Then Not the gravy happy. then the gravy train came out. I reaped four million off it. Thanks. Thanks. Amazing. So the angel investor, actually quite an underhanded player. This card here, an absolute beaut. In the last round, I pulled out this card after all the people, everybody had like put all the effort in into making whatever was going to happen, happen. We knew that Miniature Prime was not going to happen. It was an absolute flop. <laughs> but everybody had worked out, oh, yeah, cool. It's going to be it's going to be Meeple Book. It's going to be uh, Board uh, Talk. Uh, it's going to be whatever, Dice Coin. Um, this one here, select up to one share per player and buy each one for three million. Brilliant. So I went round, spent nine million quid and bought up some amazing shares of people and they had no choice. They had to sell them to me. Amazing. What does this mean? It means that I netted a huge... <laughs> One hundred and thirty nine million pounds in this game and won it by an absolute storm. Amazing, amazing, amazing. One other thing to say is uh, it was just me and James 
who were able to play down cards that gave a location uh, for uh, others to play into, which was really, really cool. James had these split ones where you could, uh, you could de deal out all the resources and then they would, uh, the person who'd landed on there would get to choose where the resources go and then James would get to choose which, one, which side he would go for first with the other, the other person getting whatever was left. Everybody wins. Really, really cool. I had some ones where, like, uh, again, expensive to put down, but great benefit. I got paid a share, and then somebody else got some large, prod like, quite a lot of stuff. So they got to put something on a project, they got three resources back, and they were able to draw a card. Amazing. And for me, just give me a share. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. They've thought about how, to, how this game plays, and it plays so well. All of us sat around the table tonight. We're like, we cannot wait to play this game again. Let's play it next week. Let's play it next week. Such a good one. Definitely go check this out on Kickstarter and get involved.